I was always drawing as a kid. I've got memories of trying to sh draw shapes of people and my grandma saying, don't use outlines, you know, think about the fact that people are made of solid shapes and shadows and things like that. And that, that definitely stuck with me. My mum was really creative as well, so she would really encourage me to pick up a pencil and do lots of sketching. So yeah, it was kind of all there, sort of the early signs. <laughs> I had a slightly different upbringing in terms of education to, to most people. Uh, my parents um, took it upon themselves to home educate us for a big chunk of our childhood. They started a really small Christian school, um, giving away my religious upbringing and uh, like super small, like 20, 20 people. So art lessons were really kind of like three or four of us who were into it, kind of doing it. And, and I guess maybe that meant there was maybe less distractions and we were kind of spurring each other on. So I think I'd just show my age here, just caught the pre kind of massive hike in uni fees. Yeah, I caught, I caught that moment at the uni and uh, trying to put my illustration portfolio together. Uh, we had a bunch of tutors who were doing jobs as well. And I think one of them had had a job come in and they just couldn't do it. And it was to make a map for a local farm. And they said, oh, Dave's been trying out creating map illustrations. Um, maybe he could do it. And I was like, yes, this is my moment. Um, I must have must be one of like the lowest illustration fees that I've ever, ever done. But it was it was all about the experience really at that point, still in uni. And it was a piece that was in my portfolio for a few years and got me a few other map jobs, so I can't complain. People I sort of started to discover during university. Um, so one person that comes to mind is mid-century illustrator called Jim Flora. He used to create these mad characters and did loads of work for jazz music, kind of promotion, record covers and flyers, and I think even some sort of theater sets or film, film sets. Just really loved his way of pulling apart characters and putting patterns into them and limited color palettes. And they always felt really like they equaled the music that they were representing. There was a lot of movement and life. I think I really cottoned onto that. Another, like, like a more recent influence, maybe is, is an illustrator called Joe He Hoon. They're an incredible illustrator um, producing these just gorgeous, like screen printed, like should we use two colors and they'll overlay and make a third color. And I love all that. I love screen printing and its influence on my work as well. And lots of thinking about how to use characters and make them feel different. Which I, yeah. It felt really odd that moment finishing university, you're in a big bubble, everything feels like, yes, I've got a portfolio that I'm happy with to an extent. I've made some connections with some people in the industry. I'd even amazingly got an agent off the back of an exhibition that we'd done at the end of university as well. Um, and it all felt like it was going great. And I thought, right, I'm gonna to move to Bristol, been in Falmouth, studying there. I moved here and then almost immediately realized that I'd rinsed my bank account, buying things like a scanner and a printer and all that stuff that you were using the university equipment and needed a job and got work in bars and uh, even a bit of secretarial work at school. And that first like few years really being out out of uni here in Bristol with hard work. I was basically just, yeah, drawing it at part-time jobs and just trying to fit in little bits of drawing when I could on the bus, that <laughs> kind of thing. Trying to put better work in my portfolio. And everyone thinks, oh yeah, he, got, he had an agent. Surely, you know, it's rolling in and it's absolutely not the case. You know, I had a couple of jobs in that first year from them. That I'm, you know, happy for, grateful for, but you know, you still, yeah, had to put in a lot of work. Yeah, it was hard. <laughs> I think if if I could do it again, I think I would pay a little bit more attention to moments of time where I've got less responsibilities in terms of I've got family and commitment to provide for them and, and, and so on. There's a huge amount of kind of time uh, that can come along when 
you know you haven't got those responsibilities so i think i think maybe that's something that i would be more aware of i think i've learned more and more that getting things done takes time and um like a regular commitment to it so just chipping away at something you know like a long-term self-initiated project really is long term you just have to kind of do a few hours every day or set a routine in place Bristol's known for its street art it's known for its graffiti people and like I said earlier I love the music of Bristol so when I got here I was really wanted to just throw myself into that whole scene of kind of music and kind of connecting with people connecting with just creativity and I had some friends they were running nights where they'd invite artists to come along and draw on big boards, pieces of paper, that kind of thing, while there was a live band or DJ playing. And so we were just there, armed with a few black Posca pens, just drawing ideas from our sketchbooks or our heads. And it was really, um, a, like, a, it was really nerve, nerve-wracking, but it really built my confidence up. And it was this wonderful moment of meet, meeting people as well. And it sort of made me think, oh, hang on a minute, illustration's not all about or being an artist or whatever isn't all about necessarily just doing commercial work or thinking very kind of linear traditional illustration maybe there's some other areas that are getting me excited but some of those connections they ended up saying oh do you want to try painting or helping out the mural and I had some really early jobs that were kind of super random where you know doing some work for the BBC on a DIY SOS program kind of painting a big mural for a community centre and it sort of, that was that and it was sort of this weird blip in kind of the late ninth, late noughties, you know, just going, right, okay, that was odd, that was kind of, came out of nowhere and massive learning experience and took ages and it was a real headache but made me want to do more. There's a mural that I did uh, under the bridge at Stokerton, near Stokerton Road train station and that was a cool project because there's these huge concrete pillars and they invited myself, Zoe Power, Hannah Hickey, uh, Rob, Way, you know, a bunch of um, really fantastic Bristol artists to take a pillar each and some other, some of the areas around there. And Zoe and I took a pillar and did a collaborative piece where I did one side, she did the other. It was an exciting project because we got to kind of we got gifted these themes that come from the local community about how they felt about the area and we had to interpret them with our sort of illustration head screwed on and then think about how they would work in the space. That, and that, that's the thing that I think also gets me really excited about murals is they're these big presence in an area that people have to live with and walk past and encounter and always thinking about, you know, what's too much, what's too little, what it's going to uplift that area it's going to add enjoyment you know and, and, and lift it up rather than be something that people just really don't like at the moment um you've caught me in the in the middle of one of the long longest jobs i've done in my career one of the biggest so really exciting they'll be in the bri in the hospital here in bristol they're for the benefit of the people training nurses doctors in in the hospital the idea behind the artworks is piecing together people, connecting, communication, healing, all of that, uh, that understanding, that kind of relationship being built between a patient and their carer. And it was a really amazing experience, like sitting down with the team at the hospital and hearing a load of stories and getting, being given a big box full of kind of material that, um, various students had creatively produced over the last few years, like bits of poetry and writing and some drawings as well, that they'd really put their heart and soul into to try and understand what, what it was like, what it's like, this kind of experience of learning how to care for people. So all of that kind of fed into what I was doing what and what kind of the, ultimately the artwork that's come out of it. Um, but I'm loving it, it's really tapping into this this side of me that enjoys thinking about spaces and the influence of art in them and, and how they can positively uplift people, improve the environment they're in. <laughs>